Welcome to the UFL. I don't know what you do. Start one of the best leagues in New York. So let me know if you love the sports. Stephen J. Dawn and Ghost are your host of Real Tough Talk. Welcome to the UFL. I don't know what you do. Start one of the best leagues in New York. So let me know if you love the sports. Stephen J. Dawn and Ghost are your host of Real Tough Talk. What's going on, people? Stephen J here, here with Ghost. Welcome to another episode of Real Tough Talk, Playoff Edition. Real excited because now it's money time. And every game has to be taken seriously because it's win or go home at this point. They got to take every play seriously because each play is going to come back to them. If they don't want to go home, they have to play hard in each and every play. I can see some exciting games happening today. And we get an opportunity to see who's real contending teams trying to get a championship and who's the guys pretending to get to a championship. That's the main thing you want to focus on. All of the big play, the big play players you're expecting to step up at this time. This is where the superstars want the ball. And this is where the little boys basically sit in the corner and cry because <laughs> everybody ain't built for this time of year. Yeah, but then at the end of the day, if the little boys want to win too, then they got to step up too. They can't be any little boys in these games. They got to grow up and at this point in time, and they got to be playmakers because if not, their team isn't going un anywhere, and all they're going to do is see the other team move forward in the playoffs. Well, we're going to get into the first game, Carver versus 99 Problems. Carver coming in the number one seed, um, 99 coming in at the number five seed in their division. 99 would, would not have to play a wild card game because Maniacs, because of personal situations with a few of the players, forfeited the game versus Maniacs um, versus 99. So that gives 99 an opportunity to come into the game fresh, not needing to play a wild card game. And that should help them because they're going to need all the energy they have to play against the two-time defending champs. Well, it's the two-time defending champs. So every break that they can get, they're going to take. And this was a great, a big break for them because... Now, you know, they're, they're fresh, they get to start out without, you know, playing a wild card game, and they can focus on Carver and only Carver at this point. Well, we're going to jump in right to the game, but first thing I'm going to tell you is Chuck will get to this game late. So we're going to have to see what happens in this game to see if that anyway changed the outcome of the game. Third down. Lowe's get blitzed by Brian. He's going to scramble, throw a deep pass for receiver in the back of the end zone. It's going to be high and complete. 99 is going to have to punt. Joey gets the start because, like I told you, Chuck is not here yet. He's going to get the start, but he can't move the ball in this first series. He's going to have to punt the ball back to 99. Lose his second possession. You're going to have him throw to the receiver, cutting across the field for a short game. Then you're going to have Lose on four rush. He's going to drop the ball, trying to scramble, forcing him to punt again. You have two opportunities, two possessions, and you're not able to move the ball. You can't do that, especially when the... Carver Mob team does not have their starting quarterback reigning offensive player of the year, Chuck. You have an opportunity to bury this team early. You have to take advantage of that. They don't give it back to um, Carver Mob. We're going to get to the ball. Carver gets the ball back now. After two short plays on third down, Joey's going to get blitzed by Kendall. And he's going to see here, he's going to run for the big game. But we're going to have a challenge fly at the end of the run. The only league, like I said before, that actually has challenges in the game and it's going to be a big challenge because that would have put Carver fourth down from around the 40 yard line 99 going to challenge it coach Blade is going to throw the red flag on the field and we're going to challenge this play now let's look back at the replay the question is was Joey sacked as you look slowly at the play it looks like Joey gets tagged right on the leg as he tries to dodge the tag so I would say with that evidence, I think it's a sack, and I think that that play should be overturned just by what we're looking at um, right here in front of us. And that's going to cause Carver to end up punting the ball. Missed tags can be challenged as sim similar to a knee being down and tackle. So that was a great challenge by Coach Blaze. Brings the ball back, all the way back to about the Carver, I would say 15-yard line, and they have to punt. Great opportunity they did to take advantage of the challenge, they do it there for the call for the punt. And the thing about it is if that play wasn't overturned, if, if Blaze didn't take a chance of challenging that play, Carver would have got the first down on that play and they would have continued to drive. So 
Blaze making that decision was a great one because it causes Carver to punt and now 99 gets the ball back. 99 gets the ball. This is their third possession. Los is going to throw deep to Dran Hassan. It's going to be knocked away by Jay. Second down, Los throws short to Kendall. That one is going to be knocked away by Danny. 99 has to punt the ball. Three straight possessions. They were not able to do nothing. They have to punt. Now we got Chuck back. 99 had an opportunity to score points early. They didn't. Got stopped. Three times had to punt. Now they got to deal with the former offensive player of the year. Chuck is going to throw to Brian in the middle for a decent game. Then you're going to have Chuck a few plays later throw to West in the gap for a big game, picking up the first down. After two incomplete passes, Chuck throws on third down deep over two defenders. Two Brian in the middle of the end zone for the touchdown. Six nothing. Carver takes the lead. They're able to drive down the field and score. Now it's going to be a harder time for 99 to keep up with Carver now that their offense is moving. So they got to do something and do it fast to stay in this game. Last play of the half, Los is going to get blitzed by Boo Boo, throw the ball deep to the receiver, going to be picked off by Angel, taking us into the half, 6 nothing. Now, if I was up, if I was down 6 nothing and it was Chuck that started the game, I'm happy. If I'm down 6 nothing and Chuck scored on his first possession, I feel worried because I had an opportunity to put points up before he got here. Did it. He got here and scored. That shows that my defense cannot stop Chuck. And not only that, they get the ball back in the half. So they just came from scoring. They're going to get the ball right back. Their offense is already moving. They're, they're in a rhythm, I, I would say. So that's going to be a problem for 99 if they keep moving at this pace. That's going to take it into the second half. Chuck gets the ball. Chuck's going to get blitzed by Dre. Go deep to West near the first down for a nice game and the first down. Then you see Chuck. Throw to West for a decent game near the 10-yard line. Third down, Chuck is going to find Brian in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown, 12 nothing. Brian's second touchdown in the game. Chuck's second touchdown pass in the game on his second possession. Wow. I mean, what do you expect? He was last year's offensive player of the year, so he's pretty much Carver Mom's offense. No disrespect to all their playmakers, but they're not the same team without without Chuck at the helm quarterbacking for this team. And you see that here. That's a difference maker, if I, if I should say so. And 99 is in trouble because Carver's in a rhythm, and they may, not be, they may be unstoppable at this point. 99 gets the ball back. On first down, Los throws to Peter. It's going to be dropped. That's going to take us to third down. Los throws to Dre. It's going to be dropped. But the question was, was this a drop? It was ruled to drop a catch on the field, but then Pams challenged it, and they're gonna look at the film, and it looks like the receiver drops the ball as he's attempting to make an offensive move. What do you think? Well, I think that it's a close play. I can see why the refs gave him the catch initially, but if you look at it better, if you look, uh, take your time and look at it, you see that he never really had possession as he was trying to spin around the defender. He has to hold on to the ball, at least through that move. Otherwise, he's not going to have be considered to have possession of the ball. Uh, in fact, as we uh, as they challenge the play, the play was overturned for an incomplete pass. That's going to take us to fourth down, and Los is going to throw the receiver cutting in the front of the front down. He's going to get contacted by Joey, dropping the ball, turning the ball over on downs, giving it back to Carver. That was all 99's offense, not Los. He moved the ball. His receivers let him down on that drive. Definitely, because he's he pretty much has been finding his receivers. They, you know, pretty much dink and duck passes, and they have not been catching the ball. Simple catches like these, they got to catch if they want to win any more games, especially this one against Carver Mob. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that in this drive. It'll hurt them if they keep playing this way. Chuck is going to throw to Joe Blow wide open on the sideline, who shakes him down and runs all the way to the five-yard line. On a free play, Chuck finds Joe Blow in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. 18-0, Carver taking really the commanding lead now. And now you see their playmakers getting into the game. Now you see Joe making plays, Joe Blow making plays for Carver Mob. Now it's, there's, there's a lot of trouble for 99. They have to score in the next drive. Otherwise, I see Carver taking this, this game away early. After getting the first down, Lowe's throws to Dre for a short game. Then on second down, you have Lowe's going deep and it's going to be broken up by Angel. Last down, Lowe's throws it up in the end zone. It's going to be caught by Dre, giving, putting him in the game. I'm, I'm lying. Not putting them in the game. 18-6. Uh, too little, too late. 
I mean, you never know because, you know, there's onside at this point of the game. Stop it. Stop it. I mean, anything can happen. Stop it. Stop I mean, it. come on. This is a Stop playoff. It. Stop it. Stop it. So you're saying they're done and that's it. That's going to get Carver the ball back. Last down, Chuck throws to Angel for the first down. And in the game, 18-6. I mean, I don't uh, – listen, who, who's a sad in hope for something to happen? I mean, come on. You don't want to see the cliche Carver mob running through a team – in the first round of playoffs. But I don't think they ran through this team. I think 99 dropped too many passes, didn't take advantage of the opportunity given to them when Chuck Knight getting here until right before the half, and they shot themselves in the foot. But I'm going to tell you this. Chuck was not the only person late to this game. Joe was also late to this game. That's their playmaker. That's their MVP candidate. And he wasn't here early in the game. And you can see that that can, co that can align with them not being able to move the ball. I'm not saying that he was supposed to get in every play, but his presence there may change the game. He wasn't there early, and they were not able to move the ball at all in the first half. And Carver moves on to the next round. They're looking to defend their championship, looking to be the first ever UFL three-time champs. 99, they, they struggled. Their offense did not help them at all. They held Carver defensively as much as they could once Chuck got here. It was over, but this is more on their offense receivers. I'm not going to really kill Los. He attempted to get the ball to the guys, but it was more of his receivers that let him down. Yeah, I mean, you got to be able to compete and at least put up points on the offense. Guys got to catch passes. That's the main thing. You got to catch passes, if, uh, the, the simple passes. If not, you're not going to get anywhere moving the offense. The defense is going to play closer to you or they're not even going to respect your receivers. When, you, when that happens, now you have gaps because they're playing away from your receivers thinking that they're going to drop the ball. Now you have opportunities to take advantage. They didn't do that in this game at all, and that's why the score ends the way it did. That's going to take us to our first Team R&R &R to 99 problems. And the Team R&R, &R, I wouldn't say, listen, R&R &R is the wrong word for a lot of these situations. It's rest and relaxation. But it's not rest, rest and relaxation. I believe it's more of off-season issues. Pretty much because not everybody's relaxing. If you remember last year's R&Rs, not everybody was relaxing. There's a lot of problems that a lot of people had. Alien abductions, people going missing. It's a lot of different things like homelessness. It's a lot of things. So right now, I think that the, the, the team issue for the offseason is So the team issue, I would say, because it's not really R&R. &R, it's, it's team R&R. &R. Listen, but it's not rest and relaxation. They needed help. They needed to be saved in this game. And Super Joe, G.I. Joe, was not the American hero in this game. He was not there. He was not present. And that's why when the hero's not there, Nobody gets saved, and that's why 99 went home today. Please help us find Joe. Help us find G.I. Joe, because without him, this team is not going nowhere. As you can see, everybody's looking around for G.I. Joe, and I think they should be looking around for the offense, too. <laughs> if you see it, it looks like they're looking for the offense, because this is something that has happened to this team all season long. I mean, at the end of the day, you see buildings getting burnt to the ground by Carver Mob coming into their territory and just taking everything down and Joe is not there to save them. So at the end of the day, that's what this 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 issue is for I like I said I can't call it team R and R because that's an issue. That's a bad thing happening. Team R and R. It doesn't make sense at this point in that, this situation. That's gonna take us to our first break. Carver with the win. 99 is out. Carver wins 18-6. 99 gonna have to look forward to next season. We'll be right back. Real tough talk. Next game up, you're going to have the U versus Reloaded. The U is the number two seed. Reloaded is the number three seed. And this game was talked about in Friday Night Lights. Though a week prior, you had Shaq going back and forth with Brandon. Brandon saying what he's going to do to Reloaded. Shaq saying what it seems going to do to you. So this is a game that was very much anticipated because of the child struck in front of the lights. Yes, because obviously both teams more so reloaded feels like they could upset the you know the you you know the the one of the teams that's been owning a lot of leagues in the city. So reloaded feels like they have a chance. Shaq feels like they have the opportunity to upset reload um the you in this game, um eliminate them from the playoffs here and have all the bragging rights in the world for his own team because he's confident that they can win this game. The issue with 
the U, I think, is the quarterbacking position. They struggled to score points this year. Shannon's definitely been this team's MVP, does whatever it takes to score, one of the most dangerous players on the field. But you're going to see Swiss get the start, which we probably – I kind of figured this was going to happen. I mentioned it before in the season that they're going to give J.J. opportunity just to see what he can do. But come playoffs, Swiss will throw, and Swiss did throw. I mean, at, at this point in time, I'm, for, I'm sure he had to. It wasn't an option to have J.J., you know, experiment on how he'll play in the playoffs. I don't think Swiss wants to lose, you know, or take any chance of losing at this point in the season. So right now, Swiss is going to quarterback. He's going to take the helm. He's healthier than he was in the beginning of the season. So I feel like he's ready to take the helm and quarterback in this game. We're going to jump right into the game on four rush. So you sends two guys after Dave. Dave passes blocked by Swiss. Incomplete pass. Next play, Dave is going to get blitzed by Swiss. Dave pass again. is going to be blocked down. Dave is then going to throw the chat in the middle for a nice game. Then the next play, Reload is going to get short of the end zone, turning the ball over, giving it to the U. And that first drive, too much pressure. Too much pressure. Dave had no time. You had underrated, practically sending two guys at him on the four rush. And this has been Reloaded's problem all season. Last year, they had Speedy, who was a great blocker. They don't have him this year. That's why they're struggling. I mean, at this point, one thing I can say is, they weren't able to adjust because they see that they're sending two guys, so somebody has to be open. But obviously, they weren't able to do that at this point. I don't know if it's because they didn't call no plays or that the receivers weren't listening, but you can see that there was problems in this drive. They didn't get anywhere in this in this drive so far. You're going to have Swiss throw to Brandon in the middle for a short game. Then Swiss is going to get blitzed by Shaq, but with nice blocking, Swiss is going to throw to Tim in the middle for a nice game, picking up the first down. Second down, Swiss throws deep, so a wide open Brandon in the end zone is going to be dropped. This is why Brandon won't get to the next level. The kid has speed, he can get open, but he drops too many passes, and this is a big play that he dropped. After that, Swiss is going to get blitz. He's going to scramble, throw the Tim in the middle for a nice game. That's going to take us to last down. With blocking from Dev, Swiss throws to Akon at the five-yard line, but gets stopped by Shaq, turnover on downs. Great stop by Reloaded. I put this on Brandon. Because if Brandon catches that ball, he scores. Sometimes you can't talk too much because it affects your play. You see it here. He drops a touchdown pass, and it leads to a turnover. Third down, you're going to have Reloaded getting the ball back. Take, we're going to take it to third down. Dave is going to get blitzed by Swiss. He's going to throw it up to the sideline, and it's going to be picked off by just, they I call him Kaka. I hate that name. <laughs> but no matter what you call him, I call it an interception, giving it back to to you. And that's all pressure again. They haven't adjusted. Um, Swiss has been coming and give, um, giving the extra pressure to Dave. This time he blitzes in. They don't have no way of stopping him from coming in. They had a blocker, but he wasn't able to stop Swiss from coming in. And it affected Dave's trajectory in his pass. Intercepted by Kaka. He's there to clean up that play. And that's a great play by their defense. I think they should have kept Shaq to block more because at least Shaq is more aggressive. He's going to give you what he got. Anybody else blocking, Swiss is running through him. He's not even challenging him. He's beating him with either speed or power. Swiss is owning this game on the defensive side. You're going to have Swiss throw to Brandon, who just gets tagged short of the end zone. Two plays later, you're going to have Swiss find Shannon in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown, putting them up 7 nothing. Easy score by the U. They take a lead. And now they get their drive together. Their defense has actually been keeping them alive, giving them more opportunities to fix their, their, their offense. Now they have. They finally get um, some points on the board. And I think Reload is in trouble at this point if they don't do anything um, quick. After getting the first down, Dave is going to throw deep to Brian, who has a step on Kaka for a huge game. Guy, if you look here, Kaka was guarding two guys. That was a great decision by Dave to pick which one to throw to. He throws it to his playmaker, Brian. Great play. Following play, you're going to have Dave finding Flacco in the end zone for the touchdown, tying the game up with the extra point, 7-7. And that's, that was because of that one play that they do, do deep to Brian. When, but one thing I can say is he was guarding two guys, but as a defender that's guarding two guys, you always give up the short for the deep. You never give up the deep because that's where it, was, um, it can hurt you more. For some reason, Kaka chooses wrong, and Brian goes right over the top of him, and that leads to that play, and it led to that score. Do you get the ball back? But what happens when they get the ball back? Reloaded throws it off, and they throw it to one of the most dangerous kick returners of all time, Shannon. And he's going to get a great return, great play by Shannon. I'm kicking the ball away from him. They don't. 
and he gets way down the field. Next play, first possession now. Swiss is going to throw the men straight in the gap for a decent game. Third down, Swiss is going to throw the Akon in the middle for, to get them in the red zone. And if you look here, Jalen gets caught cheating. Can't make this type of mistake. you got to guard your responsibility first. He does it. He gets them. Um, his mistake causes you to get some yardage. Last down, Swiss is going to throw to Akon. And Akon's going to make a nice catch for the touchdown. 14 7 to you. And. That was a nice catch by Akon. The pass was a little low, but Akon is able to um, still be able to get his hands on it. He bobbles it a little bit, but he gets control of the ball. That was a nice catch by him to, cle to, um, to clean up that play and lead to a touchdown. Next drive, you're going to have Dave throw the shot on the sideline, who's going to run out of bounds for a nice game. Then Dave, with pressure from Brandon, throws the Kool-Aid for no game. And if you look here, Brian was wide open in the end zone. And Brian has had a problem with Dave. He does not like Dave's style. Brian wants the ball long, he wants the ball deep, and that's not Dave's game. Unless Brian can get open, he's not going to force a ball, and I just said, hey, yo, right now. <laughs> hey, yo. I wasn't going to say anything, but okay. Listen, we're trying to be professional here. And what happens the next play, Dave gets blitzed, he stole to Brian in the middle. Brian's going to drop the ball, and it's going to be picked off by Shannon, taking his inch and a half, 14-7 to you. Brian got mad because he didn't get the ball. They do come to him with the ball. He drops it turnover but that's going to take us into the half in the last game they were able to move the ball when bruce is just throwing it up to brian it's either hit or miss you know nothing against bruce but my point is when you give brian a ball like that over and over again it's either sometimes you get lucky sometimes the defense doesn't play him properly or it leads to a turnover you don't force players like that dave doesn't do that but it still doesn't get them anywhere second half on four rush switch is going to throw deep to jj over the middle and it's going to be picked off by Jalen giving the ball back to reload and if you look here Kaka was open on the other side Swiss didn't see him and this is what's been happening uh, well for some reason at this play I don't know I guess Swiss was looking at the wrong side he was I looking at know, that yeah. side the whole time yeah. but if you look here Kaka was open by himself that probably would have been a touchdown pass but obviously the play was not designed for that side of the, side of the field but unfortunately it led to incomplete pass Dave gets the ball back. He's going to throw the chat in the middle. He's going to be almost picked off by Shannon. Next play, second down. Dave throws short to Chad. That one's going to be broken up by Shannon. Four centers taking us to fourth down where we loaded punts, giving it back to, to you. Remember, it's only 14-7. Swiss is going to throw the men straight. He's going to dodge Shaq and pitch it to Dev for a nice game. Then on third down with two guys blocking, Swiss throws to Brandon on the sideline for a decent game. On last down with extra time for Dev, so this is going to throw the mess right in the front of the end zone. Now you have a 20-7 to lead to you starting to run away with this one. And they've pretty much taken over. Their offense is actually, you know, in a the rhythm. They're moving the ball. They're finding their receivers. Even though they turned over the ball in the last drive, that didn't matter. That didn't slow them down. They're still connecting. The reloader has no answer at this point. And if, it looks like it's all she wrote because they haven't done anything since their first touchdown. Um, their first touchdown. Dave's going to get the ball back. He's going to throw the receiver in the middle for a short game. Last down, Dave's going to throw it up in the end zone. It's going to be knocked away, turnover on downs, giving it back to the U. Third down, near the 50. Swiss hands the ball off to Akon with a few nice blocks. Akon runs it all the way to the end zone for the touchdown, ending the game. 26 nothing. the U with the blowout win. 26-7. Oh, I'm sorry, 26-7, the U with the blowout win on reload. And I forgot that they scored because it was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens when your offense is pretty much stagnant towards the end of the game. They were not moving the ball. They were struggling with um, with pressure, and receivers were not necessarily helping Dave. So I feel this whole offense has not worked out. We would say pretty much at this point in the time that the project is not working out with Dave and their offense. They're not necessarily winning games. They won one out of three games that they played with no, Dave. No, two. Two out, of, two out of four games mm -hmm. that they played together. And... Is that a successful, do you think that that's a success when they end up getting eliminated anyway? I respect what Shaq did going forward. He attempted to make Dave the future of the team. He benched Bruce on Bruce last year. Now we're hearing rumors that Bruce is coming back. He's going to give it another try, but with a different team. Mm. And we also hear that Dave is possibly thinking of bringing in Spartans next year. So now Shaq has no quarterback. 
So he needs to put up a want ads because he needs a quarterback. And the sad part is now he's going to feel the same issues that um, Bread of Goon Squad had all season. No quarterback. And yeah. I think the team R&R, which we'll just call a team off season, mm -hmm. you can see the Reloaded buildings being knocked down. <laughs> I think it's over for Reloaded. Uh. I think this franchise is done. They had a championship at LES, but they did that with a lot of borrowed players. Mm. You have... You have um, you have Rico, you have Jeremy. Jeremy. Those are borrowed players. Yes. There is no reloaded foundation, which is why you see the reloaded building being demolished on this offseason. And a sad part about that is they have a lot of good players. They have a lot of playmakers. But they were absent in this game. Brian dropping passes. You have Chad not showing up in this game. You have um, Juni not being there for their defense. Yeah. So there's a lot of they things went and that picked they, them up, and he yes. wasn't even here. So it's a lot of things that they missed in this game, you know, and uh, unfortunately it led to them getting bumped in the in the in the division playoff game. I mean, I think it's over for Reloaded going forward. I think the franchise is done. As you see, like I said, the off season, the the tough talk off season. This team is made. This building is knocked down. I think it's over. The U moves on to the next round. And we're going to see what happens with this team. 26-7, the U with the big win. We'll be right back. Next game up, you're going to have Goon Squad versus Slaughterhouse. Goon Squad comes in as the number five seed. Slaughterhouse comes in as the number four seed. This is the wild card game. Nobody expects Goon Squad to win this game, which is, I think, the main reason why they should catch everybody off guard and maybe steal the win from Slaughterhouse. I mean, at this point, most of their opponents or most of the guys watching this game is thinking not necessarily what if they're going to lose, but how badly they're going to lose. Because for some reason, it seems like this team finds everything wrong to do when they have the opportunity to do something right. Everything goes wrong. So they have to fix it and fix fix whatever the problems they have. The main problem I see that they have is quarterback. That's to be the main issue for this team. Hopefully they can figure out something because if they cannot move the offense at all, they have no chance of winning this game. We're going to jump right into the game. You're going to have Goon Squad, can't move the ball. They're going to end up punting. Mm. So the house has the ball. After getting the first down, Ramsey throws the Welch for a decent game. Then on third down, Ramsey's going to scramble and throw to Amir and it's going to be knocked away by Bishop. Slaughterhouse is going to punt. Great play by Bishop. Bishop is really running around the field today. Great play, knocking the ball down, forcing um, Slaughter to punt. Well, he's going to do whatever he has to. He's been playing quarterback for this team in certain, in certain games. He's been playing defense, playing offense in the beginning of the season. Whatever he has to, he's going to do, and he makes a good play for their defense to get his offense back on the field. You're going to have Goose Squad second possession. Bishop's quarterback there. Bishop dodges the blitz and throws the wheel for a nice game. Then on third down, Bishop throws the shy in the middle for a nice game. After getting the first down, Bishop's going to throw the shy again for a few more yards. Last down, Bishop throws the butter in the middle, but it's going to get stopped short of the end zone, turn over on downs, giving it back to Slaughterhouse. Rams is going to throw the king in the middle for a nice game. Then you're going to see Ramsey roll to his left, pass him here for a nice game in the first down. Rams is going to throw down Finnamo on the sideline, Moe's going to have a nice catch to spike the contact, and he's going to get a big game. Third down, Ramsey rolls left, throws him in, in the end zone, but it's been knocked away by Bishop. Another great play by Bishop. That's going to take us to the last down, but Ramsey's going to find Naheem cutting in the end zone for the touchdown. Great play by Naheem. Ramsey's dangerous. Guy can score anytime he touches the ball quarterbacking. He finds out he made a touchdown. And he was not worried after that, that that knockdown pass by Bishop. Bishop trying his best for his team, but it doesn't matter. Ramsey was determined to score on his drive, and he does it by finding right now he near. Sardhouse goes on side, catches them sleeping, and Marcus gets the ball back. What is Goon Squad doing? They spend all their time yelling at each other, and they don't know what's going on. So the house gets the ball back. And the thing about it is because they have no game plan, they have no way of being on the same page. Things like this is gonna happen. So now that you're seeing you, each team fighting, they're gonna they're gonna forget the team that they're supposed to be fighting against. They're fighting each other, and they let Slaughterhouse get the ball back in this play 
when they just scored. This may be this may be an ugly for the Goon Squad if they don't fix this and fix it fast. Ramsey gets the ball back. He's gonna throw to Welch for with nice moves by Welch, runs it for the nice game. Then you're gonna have Ramsey on four rush run for a decent game. Last down. Now we talked about people using their challenges. This is a play where they did not use a challenge. If you look here, Ramsey's gonna throw the juice in the corner. Now, Slaughterhouse on this play got called for an offensive push off. But if you look at the play, Juice catches the ball and it does not look like he has the ball long enough for the touchdown to be called, even though it was originally ruled a touchdown. If Brad challenges this play, then it's an incomplete pass. He doesn't need to take the penalty because it's an incomplete pass. Brett doesn't pay attention to that. The call stands, he takes the flag, and on the next down, Rams is going to find a man in the back of the end zone. He's going to be dropped, but caught by Marcus for the touchdown. 12 zip, Slaughterhouse takes the lead. Well, the bigger I, lead. Well, I'm going to say this. I guess he was so distracted by arguing. Know, that, not everybody. That and the fact that Slaughterhouse got a penalty on that play. So I guess he was for focused on, all right, well, we don't even need to challenge because touchdown was taken away by the penalty and they could stop him in the next play. But that's why you got to coach and know, well, no, I'm going to challenge that that pass was not completed and then it will be a turnover one down. You got to know the situations. He doesn't and that hurts his team. Next play on the kickoff, the ball is going to be dropped by two guys of Goon Squad, recovered by Mo. That's going to take us into the half, but you can already see how this Goon Squad team is falling apart. And on that play, um, Slaughterhouse is not even trying to go onside. They actually do a regular, um, a regular kickoff throw, pretty much the regular throw off. The guys drop the pl the ball. They were fumbling for it, and Mo just comes out of nowhere and just grabs the ball for his team. Even though they didn't catch, they didn't drive on that recovery. The point is, they took another opportunity away from Zoom Squad to score, and that hurts them. Every time these things happen, it hurts them in the game. They lose yet another opportunity. Second half, Rams is going to throw to the right and throw to Juice in the middle for a nice game to get the first down. On second down, a full rush, Rams is going to run for a decent game. And you see, if you look at Ramsey is destroying Miguel. Miguel cannot stay with them. Ramsey's running around, buying more time for his offense. He's killing this, this goal spot team. Last down, Rams is going to throw the king in the end zone. going to be dropped, turnover, giving it back to Goon Squad. Goon Squad puts in a new quarterback. He's going to throw. He's going to throw a pass. It's going to get blocked and picked off by King right away, giving it right back to Slaughterhouse. And this is the type of season Goon Squad have been having. They shoot themselves in the foot. They just make a stop, but then they turn it over the next play, giving it back to Slaughterhouse. I mean, at this point, was it a good idea to take Bishop out? You know, he, even though they weren't able to score on his drives, a lot, a couple, a couple of games that Bishop threw, he was able to at least move the ball. We haven't seen that with, work with them this whole season since Pito was quarterbacking, and that didn't work out. So now you put in another quarterback, it doesn't work out here on the first play. It leads to a turnover for their team. I don't know what's going on, but none of these quarterbacks have gotten anything done this year, and that's why they've been going over these, going through these problems. You gotta have Ramsey roll to the right. Throw the juice in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. 18 zip, pretty much ending the game. Slaughterhouse with the big win over, over Goon Squad. I'm not going to say it's a big win because Goon Squad was playing with the house money. But they played, they were in the game in the beginning and mistakes as they've been doing all season and arguing ended this game. Well, at this point, you already know the outcome of this of what was gonna happen with this team because it's been happening to them all season. All season. You know, pretty much in the beginning, they had promising games where they would keep the game sh close. Promising games keep the game close. Yeah. They were close. They were close. Lot. Why are you repeating me for? Because see how we're teaming up? <laughs> see how I'm 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 learning or I'm copying you or we're on the same page or what we're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what Goon Squad needs to do. See how we're on the same level? You say something, I follow suit. That's called letting somebody lead and you follow. Who is the leader of this team? I thought it was Cornbread. No. I thought it was Bishop. No. I thought it was a quarterback. Doesn't exist. This team was pathetic with the talent that they had. They had a lot of talent, but this team season was pathetic. 
And I would say they were pretty much... I, matter of fact, I'm not even going to say pretty much. They were the worst team in this league at in this year. With the most talent. Yes. They had as much talent as any other team in this league. But this and they, talent... they did not... We were not able to play together. All they did was argue. They argued better than any other team. Listen. They argued better than YMM. They argued better than Riot Squad. This was the best arguing team amongst each other in the whole league. The formula for this team at this point pretty much was oil and water because none of it mixed at all at that I point. It was oil and vinegar. No, oil and water does not mix. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, everybody did that experiment as a kid or whatever. You mix oil and water, then something was wrong with your school. But let's say this. When you mix oil and water, it doesn't mix. One falls on top of the other, and it just sits there. And that's pretty much what this team did. They were there together. They were in the same vicinity, but they were not a team. They were just individual guys fighting each other in their own space. And that's not going to lead to any wins. It didn't really lead to any wins this season. They only got one win off a of forfeit. So at the end of the day, they were a losing team all the way from the beginning of the season all the way to the end. And that's unfortunate with the with the group of guys that they had. They're gonna go to Team R and R, aka Team Off Season, mm -hmm. and I think that they need to go to the mountains and chill with the monks. You know why? Because monks don't talk. Hmm. This team needs to learn to think before they talk, and that's where they need to go. You see them right here. With the monks, you see I'm there. I don't know why I'm there. I don't think I talk that much. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need to be there. I don't talk that much. So pretty much you're saying they need to give themselves an oath of silence. Yes. Pretty much. They need to go there. Well, they as you can see, that's where they are right now in the yeah. picture. Mm -hmm. But I don't, see I, I don't know why, why am I there. Huh? Why am I because there? Because you talk too much. And you know you talk too much. You like to hear yourself talk. So that's why you deserve to be there to kind of, you know, listen before you talk. Maybe then you'll be a better person because at this point, it seems like you're full of yourself, but then a lot of times when you predict certain things, you end up wrong. So sometimes you got to keep put, stop putting your foot in your mouth, but when you keep quiet, you don't have to put your foot in your mouth. You know, you just keep quiet, you keep silent, and you don't have to make any more mistakes. Is he getting at me? It's like somebody's insulting you, but you don't really realize that they're insulting you. I think you just... I'm not insulting. It's called constructive criticism. Oh. That's all it is. And that's constructive criticism we're giving Goon Squad. Because they need that. Because if they want to keep existing as an entity, they got to fix this problem. And I believe it's a fixable problem. Yeah. Because they have talent on their team. They've showed some promise in early in the season. Even though they lost a lot of their close games, they showed promise. They showed... Like, they had the opportunity to win in a lot of those they games. They showed promise losing every game they played this season. But a lot of those games, like the game that they played against the U, they battled with that team. They kept it close. They just came up short towards the end of the game. Um, losing the, to Gunners. The, yeah, that game was just an, uh, uh, an atro... I don't even want to say your word. We're going <laughs> we're gonna to wrap this up. Yeah, because we'll be here all day. Saw the house with the win. 18-0. They move on. Goon chilling with the Monks. We're going to be right back. Real Tough Talk. We'll be right back. Next game up, we have ILD versus Slaughterhouse. ILD coming in as the number one seed in their division. Slaughterhouse coming in with the number four seed after just getting a win over Goon Squad. Last time these teams met up in the regular season, ILD beat them 21-18. The bad man, Adi, threw three touchdown passes that game. No picks. Ramsey showed what he could do throwing three, three touchdowns also, but he also had an interception. So I would say the bad man kind of I played him that game. And I think that interception probably was the difference maker. That was the one difference between the stats that they had in that game. And it, does, it has to add up that that's probably one of the reasons why they lost. They, um, Ramsey and Slaughterhouse turned over the ball more. And that's why they end up um, being short three points in the game. Well, I think ILD needs to do what they did in the regular season, beat this team, try not to keep it as close. The bad man can do it. He can throw on any defense in his league. That's why he's a bad man. Even My though man, the last two games he threw 
five interceptions, I believe. I mean, doesn't matter. Doesn't it matter. It does matter. Doesn't matter. He hasn't been looking like the same if I recall, bad man that he's been looking like all season. He's been throwing not too good, and that's kind of the reasons why they end with that last game with the, with a loss. Listen. It is what it is. The bottom line is they have an opportunity to move on to the next round and face the you. Do you just beat and reload it? So they let's have focus to get on past that. This, point this is just a blip first. in the radar. We'll see. <laughs> let's jump in the game okay. right now. You're going to have Ramsey rolls to the right, then throws to Amir in the middle, and it's picked off by Brandon, giving the ball to IOD right away. Great defense by this IOD team. That was just a great play by Brandon. You didn't see him coming out of nowhere. You saw him come out of nowhere and pick off that ball. I'm sure Ramsey didn't see him coming. That's just great defense by Brandon. Another playmaker for this ILD team that you got to pay attention to. Adi gets the ball for ILD. Adi's going to get blitzed by King and throw deep to Costa. It's going to be incomplete. But Welch is going to get a flag for pass interference. What do you think? Was it a good call? Uh, I think that he got there a, a little too early. So yeah, it could, you know, yeah, I would see why the refs threw the pass interference call. It's, it's unfortunate, you know, he tried to make a play, but unfortunately he got there too early. Adi gets blitzed and sacked by Welch, taking this to third down. Third down, Adi's gonna throw deep to Costa, but he's gonna be picked off by Juice, giving the ball back to Slaughterhouse. And Juice is a great player. When he's consistently here, he makes plays, make a play, he makes a big play here to, to catch Adi. Not paying attention, he gets a pick. And the thing about it is the only thing he doesn't do consistently is show up in certain games. You know, when he's here, he plays, and he makes plays for this team. And you notice him on the field. He has to do more of that. He has to be here for this team in order for them to play better than they, than they do without him. Rams is going to get blitzed, and by Gill, he's going to run for no gain. Then on second down, Rams is going to throw deep to Marcus, and it's going to be incomplete, overthrown. Then you're going to see Ramsey throw short to Mo, who's going to run for a nice game, but Slaughterhouse is going to end the punt. And this is the thing, sometimes Ramsey's inconsistent. He could be one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but then he can look like a guy who's never played quarterback before. I mean, but you got to give it to, you know, IOD's defense as well. Sometimes, you know, they're able to close out certain gaps, they're able to lock up on, on receivers, and it looked like Ramsey didn't have much to work with on that drive. It's unfortunate, but they couldn't move the ball in that one. Adi's going to throw the ace in the middle for a short game. And after getting the first down, Adi's going to throw the ace again for a nice game. Second down, Adi's going to throw deep to Andy on the sideline, but it's going to be off target and out of bounds. On four rush, Adi with blocking from Gill is going to scramble, fall down, get back up and try to throw it away, but it's going to be picked off Guy by Garcia, giving the ball back to Slaughterhouse, Adi's second interception of the day. And... Obviously, you saw that play was going to end ugly with the way they blitzed in. Right. He wasn't prepared. He ends up falling. I'm shocked that the ref didn't call that play dead. It's unfortunate for him because he still was able to throw the ball. Maybe if it was thrown dead, that would have been a blessing for him. But it wasn't. And it leads to interception. And Slaughterhouse has the ball. Second down on four rush, you're going to have Ramsey. He's going to run for a decent game. Then you're going to have Ramsey get blitzed by Gill and throw to Welch, but it's going to be incomplete. That takes us to last down. Ramsey's gonna roll left, throw the juice wide open in the end zone for the touchdown, giving Slaughterhouse the 6 0 lead. And this is one thing I can say about Ramsey. He's comfortable throwing on the run. And he's one of the most dangerous running throwing quarterbacks in the league. It formerly was Watt, but I think Ramsey is faster than Watt. He's able to make moves, and I think he has a stronger arm than Watt. So that makes this man that more dangerous. And the thing about it is they have to respect that he can run. He is a better runner than, than, than Wack is. He's probably one of the best running quarterbacks in this league at this point. Other than Rudy. Uh, like Rudy's I said, the best. One, that's why I said Rudy's one the of. Michael Vick of touch football. Yes. But Ramsey is a better quarterback yes. than Rudy. But, but my point is he's still a, a running quarterback that you have to pay attention right. to because he's able to put, score points with his feet alone. So they, when, they was, when they have to step up on that, he's able to make accurate throws on the rollout. So this guy is dangerous at any point in time in the game. And that's why, one of the reasons why they're able to score here. Seven nothing right now, Slaughterhouse. You're going to the next one is following kickoff. You're going to see a, scu a scuffle during the kickoff. These teams know each other from 718. They don't really like each other that much. And you expected it to be a lot of motions, a lot of intensity. So this is getting almost expected. Well, I, I can't necessarily date that they, you know, at the point where they have bad blood. But obviously it's a competitive game. 
These guys are competitive. They both feel like they can beat each other, and they're going to do whatever they have to to win this game. Both of them want this game back, and they're looking to fight for you, it. You know Slaughterhouse did beat yes. IOD in the playoffs and in, that's, in mm, that makes that even These teams more. don't like each other. Listen, obviously any teams that's playing each other in the playoffs, that's beating the other team in the playoffs. I don't like you. Way. Of course. So, but there's a lot not to like about me. It's a lot about, about me that's better than you. So right. That's why you don't like me. Listen, let's just get back to the game. Adi's going to throw deep to Cliff, who has a step on Jared for a huge game. Then Adi gets blitzed and sacked by Marcus. On last down, Adi throws to the ace in the end zone for the touchdown with the extra point, 14-7. And that is the bad man we're talking about. Or at least I'm talking about. He gets blitzed and sacked by Marcus, but does not use it as an excuse not to score. And on last down, finds Ace, who is a superstar in this game, for the touchdown, 14-7. And listen, you talk about Adi a lot for some reason. Like all season, you've been talking about, yes, he's a great quarterback. He's, no, he's not just a great but quarterback. He's, your favorite. he's a bad man. He's a bad man. That's another way of saying your favorite. But I can't say that I can argue he is a great quarterback when he's consistent these last couple games he hasn't been looking the best hopefully this will be the game that'll get him back on his feet he'll it'll have to if they want to close out this game but he's able to score here in this drive so house can't get the first down it's going to take us into the half seven seven and my concern about is how you know Adi had the ball and he threw two picks that's my concern we've seen him throw a lot of interceptions that would be in his last three games with this game combined with the playoffs he has thrown seven interceptions. Yeah. That is too many picks for a man who threw none in the first six games. That is too much. I think that is a concern. Tony needs to get Adi on board and tell him to stop taking so many chances. He didn't do it in the season. He made a lot of safe throws, made a lot of good throws. He's taking chances here. He already got two picks to do. Well, I guess towards the end of the season, the games get more heated. A lot of things get more intense. And sometimes you lose you lose your focus in the game. And obviously, sometimes you don't take certain things seriously. It, who knows what it is? But the point is, he hasn't been as consistent as he's known to be. And hopefully, he, he's going to need to fix that going through this game if he's going to want to, if he wants to win this game. And on the other side, the ILD's pressure on Ramsey has been good. He's a good runner, but Gill is there with him. Gill is very physical, and he has to watch where Gill is at because this, this IOD team is good as blitzing and Ramsey is not the most accurate quarterback in the world. Sometimes he can be off target, sometimes it takes stupid chances as you can see when he got picked off by Brandon. He has to play better, he didn't play great in the first half but it's only 77. Adi's just gonna get the ball for IOD in the second half, he's gonna throw the ace who runs for a decent game. Then Adi throws short to the receiver for a short gain in the first down, but Moe gets flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct. Like I said, a lot of motions these games, these teams do not like each other, so you're gonna expect to see a little physical play. Adi then throws it to Costa and Asana for a big game. Then Adi, he's gonna roll to his left, gets blitzed by Marcus, and throw the ace in the middle of the end zone for the touchdown, 13-7. And with the pressure coming, the bad man still is able to find his receiver, his go-to man ace, for the touchdown. Well, when Ace is out there, he'd be, he'd be anybody's um, go-to guy. Ace is a, is a superstar on this team. He's probably one of the best offensive players on this team. So he finds ways to get open, and I think that was the key there for um, Adi throwing that touchdown pass. If Ace isn't there to get open and create space for himself, then I don't see them scoring. So Ace being here is the difference making this drive. After two incomplete passes, Ramsey throws to Amir in the end zone to be knocked away by Andy. Last down, Ramsey runs for a nice game, but short of the end zone, turnover on downs, like I said. He's not hitting his passes. He having a lot of balls knocked down. He gets stopped on his drive. ILD with great defense, still 13-7. And not only that, he's being predictable. They know where he's going now. Amir has been one of his, his main receivers all on all until the end of the season. So he's gonna find great ways to get to him, sometimes force passes to him. And you see a forced pass to him there, and he was sort a mile away and he's able to break it up. That's what led to that turnover. Adi's gonna get near the 50 yard line on last down. Adi throws deep to Jesus. Knocked away by Mo, turnover on down. Now, if you're near the first to 50, you're trying to get the first down. Why would you go deep? And that's why I'm disappointed <laughs> with my bad man. He's not making the best decisions. And this has been the, the, the problem in the last couple of games. He's been taking risks. 
risks that he doesn't normally take. And that hurts this team. When Adi is not his normal self, and when Adi is forcing passes, you know, creating turnovers, I would say, because that was an unnecessary turnover. This team will be in trouble if you have that type of Adi playing, because that's not the Adi that they need to win a championship with. Ramsey gets the ball back, and he does this better, than, almost better than any quarterback in the league. He throws deep, and he finds wide open King, who runs in the end zone, tying up the game, 13-13, and nobody can say that one thing Ramsey ha doesn't have is an arm. That guy has a cannon, and he lets it go here, touching that pass. And on the deep pass, he can be kind. He, I would say, when he's throwing deep, he can be accurate on those passes. He's very consistent on a deep pass, and he's able to find his receivers, regardless of what defender's on them. That's an impressive throw right there by Ramsey, and he's not scared to throw it either. That's the Ramsey that they need to keep them in this game, and he does it here. First down, he's gonna get sacked by King. Then on third down, four rush, Adi shakes King, throws to a wide open Andy on the sideline, who has nice blocking from Cliff. He's gonna run it into the end zone for the touchdown, Killing some time, but giving them a 20 to 13 lead. And look at this play. Remember, King just sacked Adi two plays before. Adi shakes him on this play and finds Andy downfield. Great throw by the bad man. That's why he's my Aaron Rodgers of touch football, because he can be mobile, but he still has an arm stick to get the ball to his receiver. He does it here. That's why he is a bad man. Well, I'm going to say that him buying himself some time by dodging King on this rushing on four, on, on four rush was the difference maker of this play. Without this, King probably either sacks on, puts pressure on him, this would have not been a complete pass and Andy would have not been able to get anything done on this play. That one move right there was the reason why they scored. That's pretty much how it was. That's an impressive move by Adi to make, give himself some time. Slaughterhouse is gonna get the ball, but they can't score on this last play and in the game. 20 to 13, ILD moves on to the next round. And this was a hard fought game for both teams. Unfortunately for Slaughterhouse, they, they fell short at the last minute and ILD, Adi kind of kept it together and he was able to win this game for his team. On that last drive, I would say, is what did it for this team. And ILD moves on. Adi got to be a little more consistent. He has to not be a risk taker. Let's just say this Adi that showed up in this game is the Adi they never want to see again. That's all listen, I'm saying. Listen, he was not a broken clock. Oh. A broken clock is right twice a day. Listen, you're a broken clock for some reason because it seems like you you keep going to the same thing over and over and over again. When are you gonna move to the next second? Because for some reason you keep clicking on the same one. We heard that line before. What? At the end, that clock or whatever. We heard that line before. The thing about it is, Adi, like I said, this is not the Adi that is a quarterback of the year candidate. This is not the Adi that's been leading him throughout the season at the top seed of this, uh, uh, in the standings. This is not the Adi that they want to see ever again. This Adi needs to leave this team and never come back. That's all I got to say. If they want to win a championship, this Adi should never show up again. At the end of the day, he threw three touchdown passes and won the game. That's all that matters. It don't matter to me how he did it. It don't matter where he looked away doing it. He won. That's what that matters. He's a bad man. I have to count that. He got that. it. He Listen, I have to count to that on, a, on a, the, 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 the one reason because now it's going to get tougher. We're going to see stronger defenses they have to face. Right. So... This performance here, it doesn't matter how you say, it doesn't matter how. The point is, this performance is not going to win him the next Well, game. he knows that because if he plays this way versus the U, they're going home. Yes. The U has a better defense than Slaughterhouse. So if he plays that way, they're going home. And he knows that. But at the end of the day, he stuck out a win while playing bad. So he'll take that. So now he know he has his team support and he got to turn it up if he wants to get his team back to the champion, to get them to their first UFL championship. Now, on the other side, Swordhouse, they have to get it together. They had a lot of opportunities. They had an opportunity to win a chip at 718. They had an opportunity to bump the number one seed in UFL, and they came up short. This team needs to get it together, and maybe they can figure it out in the offseason what they're going to have to do for this team. Because you can't consistently 
do this to yourself because eventually guys are going to get tired of that, of these losses. Mm -hmm. they, they woke up late this season. They should have had a, a better record than they had. And I don't think they took this league seriously, which is why they're out in the second round. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a learning experience for them. I'm sure that they're going to be fired up to come back in the next season. Um, they, they obviously see that they can survive in this league. You know, they play it all the way to the second round, and they played a hard game all the way to the end. Unfortunately, they weren't able to close it out. They need to learn how to do that. And um, going forward, if they want to ever get a championship out in this league or in any, any other league they play in. Well, I know what they R and R should be, or as you would say, their off season. Mm -hmm. They need to wake up from these dreams of winning a championship. Wow. They did it in seven one eight. They try to do it here. Wake up from those dreams. You can see the teams dreaming, the players dreaming of winning the championship. It's time to make your dream a reality and do what you need to do to win. Because regardless of how well you may have played, you still lost. Nobody's going to remember you had your success this season in UFL. Nobody's going to remember your success from 718 because you got nothing to show for it but another statistic loss like everybody else. That's wow. not a chance. So you're saying at the end of the day, they weren't capable of winning the championship at all. Like, they had no chance whatsoever. They had dreams of doing it. But when a person has dreams, the way you're saying it is like they had no chance. Like, they need to give up because it's just dreams. They're dreaming. <laughs> they dreamed this. And he it. says, I'm disrespectful. No, listen. I'm not taking anything away from what they have accomplished. But if you're going to play, you got to play from the beginning to the end. You got to come and focus the beginning to the end. They had the focus of beating IOD, they lost. They had the focus of beating the, hustl the Hustlers in 718, they lost. It's time to make this dream a reality, eventually. So, listen, me personally, I just think that they need to get more, more strong. They need to get stronger and more consistent. And consistency is something that they've been struggling with this season. Because a lot of games that they could have won, they lost. They finished in the middle of the pack this season when they didn't have to. They had ta they had a talented team that can play among the best of them, but they haven't showed it this season, and that's probably why they were they finished they came up short in this very game to get bumped and go home. That's all we can say right now. Well, that's all I can say. You know I can say a lot, but <laughs> I'm not. We're gonna take this next break. Saw the house. Loses to IOD. IOD with the big win, 20 to 13. Move on to the next round. Slaughterhouse goes home. We'll be right back. Next game up, YMM versus Bulldogs. YMM comes in as the number one seed in their division, and Bulldogs come in as the number four seed. Everything is stacked on YMM's side to win a championship this year. They picked up Santana. They picked up Todd. They picked up Ice. They picked up Mijo. They got Vic. They got a lot of good guys on the team that can help them win a chip. The problem is, can they actually do it? Can they keep their emotions in check as they try to get to the, the promised land of a UFL championship? Well, what's going to be telling is how they play moving forward. You know, the playoffs is going to be where – the playoffs is pretty much where they, get, they stop short in the last couple of years. You know, that's going to be their – they're humped to get over. You know, the, the second round has been something that they haven't been able to get out of in the last couple of years. So they got to find a way to get out of that. And I think then is when people will start taking them seriously. Right now, they're supposed to be expected to win this game. And the Bulldogs, nobody really know about this team. I like their guy, Troy. He's a good player. He had a pick six last week to end the game for this Bulldogs yeah, team. Yeah, two in the seven yeah. that game, though. But. So they're playing with the house money. Nobody expects much from them, and they need to just do what they need to do in order to upset YMF because it can happen in the UFL. And the whole point is because nobody knows them, that's gonna, that can be that, that what they can use at their advantage because a person that you don't know, how can you create a strategy for them? So that's going to be the key on how they move forward in this game. We're going to start off with the game, Bulldogs with the ball, and they're going to end up getting sacked. Santana with the big sack for YMM starting the game out. Bulldogs can't move the ball. They end up punting. Nelson gets the ball. He throws a pass to Santana on the sideline for a nice game. Del Nelson on last down throws to Jeremy. The corner of the end zone is going to be dropped, turnover on downs. 
Bulldogs get the ball back and they struggle to move the ball. They have to punt again for the second time. Second down, Nelson rolls right, throws deep to Jeremy and Enzo, dropped again. Two plays later, Nelson's able to find Vic in the middle of the end zone for the touchdown, giving him a 6 nothing lead. And I like the fact that Nelson is keeping his composure, even though his favorite receiver, Jeremy, is dropping a lot of passes. These are passes that we've seen Jeremy catch. I'm not concerned with it because he's one of the best players in touch football that he needs to be consistent because this is money time and you got to make these plays. But Vic comes away with the touchdown. Vic helped him all season. He's stepping up here. Great play by him. Bulldogs get the ball back, and the quarterback is going to throw to the receiver in the middle, but it's going to be picked off by Jeremy, giving the ball back to Wyman. And it's funny because we just seen him drop two passes, but then he makes it up here catching the most important one, which is an interception. Even though you say that he's the best, um, one of the best players in touch football, and I agree, I feel like he's a better defender. He's yeah. a dominant defender, probably one of the best defenders I've ever seen play touch football. So not to necessarily boast, but... If you look at the footage that we that we have, whatever, it's, it's a lot of poof there. The thing about it is, he's very consistent on defense, more so than offense to me. He shows it here on, on, a, on another interception to put in the record books for him, and YMM gets the ball back. Nelson gets the ball. He's going to throw the ice to get them to the 10-yard line. Then Nelson's going to get blitzed. He's going to throw the Jeremy in the corner, ends him for the touchdown. Ice gets the extra point, 14-0, YMM. And of course, like, I, like you said, Nelson wasn't worried about those last drop passes because why he tried to catch the first down pass. When he's on the field, he's focused, he's playing, he's dominant. And that's why they have the lead right now. That's going to take us into the half. Now we're going to jump into the second half. Second half, third down. Nelson throws to Jeremy wide open in the end zone. But the ref said he stepped out of bounds on the line. And as you can see here, Nelson is going crazy for them to throw the challenge flag, as is Jeremy. They want them to challenge the play. They go to the booth. They um, sees, throws out the red flag and challenges the play and they're going to be going to look at it here and it looks like the call is going to be changed touchdown and the funny thing is Rico was against the whole choice of, of challenging the, um, the play he felt they didn't even need the touchdown it wasn't that big of a deal they could move on and lock up on defense and end the game there but Jeremy and Nelson was determined Caesar agrees with them they challenge it and if you look at this play if you slow it down as Nelson go, I mean, as Jeremy goes to catch the ball, he grabs it and cradles the ball as he spins, uh, making his two steps to go out of bounds. And he's able to hold on to the ball as he falls out of bounds. He has both feet in bounds. He has control of the ball. It looks like a touchdown to me, and it was overturned. Um, as such, they get the touchdown. They go up twenty to nothing, and I, I, I mean, that was a great challenge. I was the ref that was on the line deep. It looked to me like he stepped on the line from my position, but that's why we got cameras. That's why we have challenges. They challenge this play. Great challenge by them. They're going to get the, the reward of the touchdown. And I got to say, we're some of the best cameramen out there. Because it's, it's hard to catch plays that you can challenge. So you got to give us some credit that we're able to, you know, get the right calls there on the field with the challenge. So I hope y'all guys are watching because we do a lot of work for y'all guys to make things happen so and by the way credit. that wasn't him who no it wasn't but i'm just as it good it was anise kiara she got a great shot zoomed it in perfect time and you see the difference between her and marvin niece who is kind of terrible <laughs> we can go, but we won't talk yes about but that she's now. very good y'all gotta give him some credit bulldogs are gonna get the ball they're gonna end up hunting giving the ball back to one them they, they often struggled all day and then you're gonna have first down nelson gets the ball back he's gonna overthrow fred picked off by troy giving the ball back to Bulldogs. Unfortunately, Bulldogs can't score, so they're gonna lose this game. 20 to zero, Wyman with the win, going to the next round. And it's unfortunate for the Bulldogs because they had a hint of talent on their team. They just have no, the, the, the usual issue with most teams, they don't have a quarterback. quarterback. So until you have a stable quarterback, a guy that can get these guys the ball, you won't, never, you won't really know how good these guys are. And that's why they, won they lost this game. They were given a handed loss to them pretty much. There was no way they had a chance to win this game. They couldn't move the ball. And that's something that they may have to fix going into the offseason. They said they'll be back next year. But, you know, that's the end of their season. Well, their offseason team R&R &R should be a star search look for a quarterback. They need a quarterback. 
You see them here looking for a quarterback. I'm glad they invited me there because we're going to help them look for a quarterback together because offensively, this team has gave us nothing from the quarterback position. Troy's a good two-way player. You've seen him catch some passes. You've seen him get some picks. But this team needs to step it up if they want to be taken seriously in the UFL. They will not be a complete team without a quarterback, in my, in my opinion. The thing about it is we only seen them play in two games. You know, both games they had no offense. They won the first game they played right, on six. defense alone. Pick six you know? to win the game, so, yeah. The thing about it is they need a quarterback. Until they find an actual quarterback that can get these guys the ball, like I said, we will never know how good these guys really are. So they're still a nobody at this point. No offense to them. But once they get the quarterback, then we'll get to see what they really have. And Wyman moves on to the next round. They're excited. They're ready to go. And we're going to have to see where they play soon. We'll be right back. Real tough talk. Wyman with the big win.